Hi there. Today, I'm going to talk about data fabric. In the past decade, we have seen a change in information architecture. We have seen more of data lakes and less of data warehousing. Even with data lake architecture, what we have seen is we still are ending up with a lot of data silos. And now the data silos are not just in your premises, in your data centers, but across your cloud infrastructure and even on the edge system. To ensure you can access this data and make sense of this data, you need a better and enhanced information architecture. And that is where Data Fabric comes into play. Data Fabric is an abstract layer which allows you to access and share data across the sources in your organization. Data Fabric has got five key capabilities. Number one, self-service. You need to have a self-service access to your data so that the business users can make the most out of it. Number two is your intelligent catalog. You should have an intelligent catalog which is infused with machine learning and AI so that you get a good data quality, you get a metadata across your organization and are able to search for the relevant assets required for your analysis. Number three, you need to have an intelligent and effective data pipelining or data integration. You don't want to move data unnecessarily and hence a key aspect here is also data virtualization. Number four, all these capabilities need to be underpinned by data security and policies and ensuring that relevant governance is in place. And number five is to have a unified life cycle to build, test and manage the shared data across all the steps in your data fabric architecture. Here is Gloria Yi impersonating as a data analyst in a big bank and showing how you can use IBM's data fabric architecture and I thank my colleague Ian Gotzel who has scripted this demo. So do enjoy and until next time, please be safe and take care. Hi, my name is Gloria and I'm a data analyst for a bank. For me to be successful in my role and supporting the business, I need access to data and I need the data on demand. It's important for me to have access to quality data that will help me resolve our business problems with minimal IT involvement. Our bank has a broad range of customers, including the ones that have home loans with us. They have to make regular repayments to the bank, and in some instances, there are customers that default on their home loans, so we have a risk of losing them as a customer. So we need to identify these customers earlier so we can assist them as needed. For me to identify these customers, I need access to sensitive data related to home loans that sits across on-premise and cloud databases. And I, to, I need to make a request to the data engineering team for the data to be vetted and to get a copy created for me to access. This is a very time consuming process. So while I was talking to my colleague in marketing, she said that she uses IBM's Cloud Pack for Data as their end-to-end -end data platform. And on the platform, she's able to find the data in a business context, understand the quality of the data, and apply it on their data science projects to gain different insights. I decided to give it a go, and I was impressed. And here's my experience of using IBM's Cloud Pack for Data to identify customers that are likely to default on their home loans. I've logged onto the Cloud Pack for Data console and I need to start building a machine learning model to help me determine the customers that are likely to default on their mortgage. However, I'm not too sure what sort of data assets to use for this analysis. So let me start by searching for the word mortgage. As you can see, 
I see a number of different asset types related to the word mortgage, as well as a number of data assets to choose from. A good starting point for me here is to look for the business terminology. So I'll filter by type and business term. There are a few business terms I can see here. And in particular, I see the mortgage customer business term that I've seen in other reports before. This might lead me to some relevant data assets. So let's have a look. On this page, I can see the description of the business term and the category that it falls under. So I know that this is the right business term that I want to work with. I can also see different relationship it has with other assets. And on the right side of the screen, there is the data steward that worked on publishing this business term. So if I have any further questions, I can reach out directly to them. Because I'm interested in finding the data assets related to this mortgage customer business term, let's look at the related content. There are multiple data assets here, and I can see that there's a table called mortgage default customer detail. And this sounds like it could be relevant for my analysis. So let's find out more. So on this asset tab, I can see the sample data of this table, including the different column names, the data type, and the data classification. I can also see some columns have been masked, which means the masking rule has been applied dynamically. If I go into the profile tab, this gives me more detailed view of the data, including how accurate the data classification has been done. The, the frequency distribution of the data, and also the statistics of the minimum and maximum values. On this particular table, I find a column called mortgage default, and this column might be useful to build my machine learning model on. Finally, the review tab gives me a view of how other users have rated this data asset. Here I see a comment from a data steward uh, comment commenting that this is a virtualized asset. I'm very curious to find out more about this. I've logged in as a data engineer to have a look at the data virtualization service. This allows them to connect to different data sources, in this case, a Microsoft SQL server, a DB2 database on cloud, as well as a DB2 database on on-premises. By connecting to all of these data sources across the business, they were able to create a view by combining all the necessary data together, which allows me to conveniently access the data straight away. Now that I'm happy with this data asset, I'm going to add this to my data science project. This project contains all of my assets in one area where I can collaborate with other team members, I can enrich and also refine the data a bit more to make it relevant, and I can also leverage different data science technologies to help me create a machine learning model. Here's the mortgage data asset I added earlier, and now I can access it directly from my project. Now I want to refine the data to prepare it so I can use it to build my model. I want to remove all the columns that are masked as they're not really relevant for me when I'm building my machine learning model. So I'm going to do this by using the data refinery tool. The data refinery tool allows me to apply different operations on the data, and you can do all of this self-service, which means Non-technical users can also do this easily to enrich their data. So let's see how this works. For me to remove a column that has been masked, I'll use the remove operation. And here I can select the column that I want to remove. In this case, mortgage customer ID, which has been masked. And once I have 
applied all the changes, I can see all the steps on the side here that I've taken. And when I'm happy with the refinement, I can save this in a CSV file or in a database to use it for building my machine learning models. In this case, I've saved it into a CSV file. Now I'm back in my project and here's my CSV file with the refined data that I've already created. I'm ready to start building a machine learning model now. So let's start an auto AI experiment. Auto AI is a tool that helps you to easily create different machine learning models without needing to know how to code. Let me start by naming this experiment. And I'll add the data asset that I've already added to the project. So the data asset that I added here contains the information around whether a customer has defaulted on their mortgage or not. I won't be doing a time series forecast in this case, but I will be predicting the mortgage default field. And this field has the value of yes or no. And in this case, Auto AI tool has already indicated that and chosen a binary classification as a prediction model. I'll leave everything else as a default and start running the experiment. Let's, let's kick it off. Here's a completed auto AI experiment. And while it was running, I could see the whole progress of it going through selecting the, the top algorithms to build out the pipelines. And here is a relationship map, which shows the top algorithms that were used to create each of these models. And just underneath that, I can see the models have been ranked by its highest accuracy. And I can drill down into each of these pipelines. Here I can see what sort of algorithm was used to create this particular model, the importance of the feature, and the different evaluations that was made to show the performance of the model. Finally, I can save this straight into what's a machine learning model asset. Or if you wanted to look at the code behind creating this model, you can save it into a notebook. The Cloud Pepper data has given me a self-service interface to find and understand the data, access virtualized data from different data sources, refine the data to make it relevant for me, and finally, help me to create a machine learning model in a very short amount of time. So the job is done. I can now go back to the business and share the results that I got from the data fabric provided by Cloud Pepper data.